Welcome to the family, son. This is another game I was really excited for. It combines my two favourite genres, sci-fi and horror, and being directed by Glenn Schofield, who co-created Dead Space, you could see the parallels between the two, even at a cursory glance. Okay, that's enough intro, let's just get straight into it. This quest begins with us stepping into the shoes of Jacob Lee, a deep space freighter pilot who's transporting some sort of medical supplies to Black Iron Prison on Jupiter's second largest moon, Callisto. And of course, as with all good quests, sh** hits the fan almost straight away. Within minutes, our ship's being boarded by suspected terrorists. We for some reason decide to channel our inner Ellen Ripley and blow the airlock to get rid of them. And guess what? That was a really dumb idea. They shoot through the glass, so now we're all dealing with rapid decompression. Nobody's enjoying it, least of all the ship. And we crash to the frigid surface of the aforementioned moon. The first mate, Max, looks a little bit worse for wear. Now I know that sounds a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but I mean, look at him. He's barely got either of them. <laughs> anyway, enough dad humour. The door gets ripped open by a robot prison guard, and for some unknown reason, we're taken into custody and branded an inmate. And following some pretty questionable surgery, we wake up in our cell with all hell breaking loose around us. Our cell door is inexplicably open, so we escape and are met with the sight of absolute pandemonium unfolding before us. We meet a fellow guest at Callisto's pleasure, Elias. He gives us a shiv and asks us to help him escape too. Venturing deeper into the cell block, we're forced to kill a couple of inmates in self-defense and pick up our first weapon, which is essentially a giant claw hammer. It's here where we're introduced to the twisted form of this game's enemies, the Biophage. Infected humans contorted into bubo-ridden feral killing machines. And shortly after that, I was introduced to two other things. This game's crushing difficulty, and lots of different death animations. I'm not gonna lie, this second biophage just made me rage quit. So I had a couple of glasses of wine and a decent night's sleep, and made sure I got up before the kids in the morning to have another go, as I don't think it'd go down well with my wife playing this in front of them. Coming back with fresh eyes was a great idea, I was able to get used to the controls and progress on. I took an elevator ride the wrong way and ended up fighting my way through solitary confinement, made my way to the infirmary where I saw a security robot performing his own high caliber surgery on some inmates, and after fighting my way through some more of the prison I got my hands on a stun baton off a dead guard, made my way to the security tower and got to say goodbye to the man that put me in here, Captain Leon Ferris. See you mate! We manage to meet back up with Elias, and he gives us the ability to 3D print our first gun, the hand cannon. Honestly, this just looks awesome. It's here where Elias informs us that we're going to have to break out another inmate, because we're going to need a hacker to help us steal a ship so we can escape Callisto's frigid grasp. The only issue with this is that they're in the secure housing unit, or shoe for short, and you're right, you guessed it, it was up to me to go down there and get them out. So I took a trip through the medical facility and found a grip along the way. That's this game's analogue to Dead Space's Kinesis. Here we saw a holographic recording of a prisoner turning into a biophage and doing some prime WWE moves. I fought through the hordes in the basement, died a bunch more times and finally made it to the shoe. Only to find that the inmate that we're looking for is none other than the terrorist that boarded our ship at the start of the game, Danny Nakamura. Okay, so that's the introduction to the story done, so let's have a little look at the gameplay and the presentation. So before we start, just a quick PSA that I played through this on the PlayStation 5, so that's the version I'll be talking about, though I am aware that there were massive issues with performance on the PC, but I didn't play that version. Right, let's talk about the presentation. This game, it looks really good. Graphically, it's stunning. I'd love to use the word beautiful, but I don't think that's the correct word for this kind of game, as it relies so heavily on a dank biological horror aesthetic. It's incredibly, believably gross. I felt like a lot of the time I could almost smell the images on the screen, and that even though Callisto is roughly minus 139 degrees Celsius, it felt humid and moist, with lighting that accented the general wet feel of the visuals, with the reflections on the wet surfaces reminding me of the remake of Resident Evil 2. I didn't encounter really any issues with performance like the PC version had, I had some minimal frame rate drops, and I did witness a couple of hilarious 
various animation glitches, such as being headbutted by a biophage that doesn't have a head, or getting my head punched in by a biophage that's missing an arm. <laughs> Honestly, this didn't really take anything from my enjoyment. The controls, however, kind of did, so I'll move on to those next. As I mentioned previously, I really didn't get on with these to start with. You press left or right on the left analog stick to dodge, and hold backwards to block. You can tap the analog stick at the last minute to do a perfect dodge, but I found this unreliable, which is admittedly probably my old man reaction times, so I found it safer to hold the direction, but that meant that I wasn't really in charge of my positioning as much as I'd like to be. I'd say this led to more than a few unnecessary deaths. They aren't the worst controls that I've ever come across, but they're certainly not good. Okay, so let's talk about the combat next. I had no real issue with the combat and the gunplay. Whether I was shooting or swinging a weapon, it felt pretty responsive, though you can get locked into the animation of a swing and take a hit. Though the combat can be a bit repetitive, I actually genuinely enjoyed it. I found it weighty, visceral and genuinely rewarding. This game is hard. When you get through a fight, you feel like you've been in a fight. It really does live up to the survival side of the survival horror experience. You are struggling to survive every time you are in a fight. There is definitely an argument to be made that some of the difficulty is artificial because the biophage are so spongy, but personally, I enjoyed the challenge, frustrating as it may have been. Right then, before I give my final thoughts, I guess the last thing to talk about is the story. From this point on, you're definitely into spoiler territory, so skip to the timestamp on the screen if you don't want to have the story ruined for you. Unsurprisingly, the company that runs Black Iron Prison, the United Jupiter Company, or UJC for short, has been running human experiments on its inmates. Yep, that's right, it's basically the Umbrella Corporation in space. But behind every good evil corporation, there's a clandestine group of powerful figures pulling the strings. In this narrative, it's the Calipolis, a mask-wearing secret society, hell-bent on forcing human evolution so that we're better equipped for life amongst the stars. Fun little bit of trivia. Calipolis is actually a hypothetical utopian city that was discussed in Plato's manuscript Politeia from about 375 BCE. Okay, so to understand where this infection comes from, we're going to have to travel back 75 years to the Arcus colony. These colonists were miners and they unearthed an alien behemoth. Luckily, they had a security team and they were able to put down this alien. Unfortunately, it was too late before they realized that its belly was full of parasites, thus creating the first bio biophage outbreak, and in true evil corporation fashion, the UJC came in and sterilized the area, meaning they basically burnt everyone alive. During this process, the UJC observed a biophage that kept his intelligence, known as Subject Zero. Unfortunately for them, he was killed as well. So the UJC sealed off the colony, made a lab to research the infection, and eventually built a prison on top so they would have a steady flow of human test subjects. With the ultimate goal of recreating Subject Zero, this time known as Subject Alpha. Right, let's head back to the future and understand how Jacob Lee and Danny Nakamura fit into this narrative. Let's start with Danny Nakamura. At the beginning of this game, she's labelled a terrorist and is supposedly responsible for an outbreak on Europa. Of course, this was all the work of the UJC. She'd been framed and unfortunately her little sister was killed in the incident. This led to her dedicating herself to finding out the truth and exposing the UJC. And suspecting Jacob of transporting biological weapons, this is what led her to board his ship, triggering the events of the game's introduction. Okay, we'll move on to see exactly where Jacob Lee fits into everything. After escaping together and, well, this... Danny and Jacob go back to the crash ship to check the cargo for proof that Jacob has been smuggling the biophage for the UJC. The whole while, Jacob has been protesting his innocence, and when she checks the cargo, it actually is just medical supplies. But Jacob's got a secret even he doesn't know. For most of this game, Jacob's suffering some form of amnesia, his head's very fuzzy. Now, it could be from the crash, but it's more likely from when they put the core unit directly into his brainstem. And when he finally gets these memories back, we find that he did know that he was smuggling the biophage. That's why him and his partner were arguing at the start of the game, and that's why he was getting paid so much. Boom, secret compartment. So now all that's come to light, let's find out if the Calipolis found Subject Alpha. Of course they did, and it's none other than Captain Ferris, the guy we saw get yeeted out of a window earlier. This is of course the final showdown of the game, and once we defeat Alpha Ferris, 
It's Time to Escape Black Iron, which has unsurprisingly been set to self-destruct, and we all saw this coming. There's only one escape pod left, so we bundle Danny Nakamura into it with a sample and sacrifice ourselves as an act of redemption. There's a slight glimmer of hope for us and one final jump scare, and that's the story done. Right, before I get into my final thoughts, please like and subscribe. Currently, it's about 2% of you. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Any constructive criticism is always welcome here on the channel. Let's get into it. The Callisto Protocol is not a bad game. It's just unfortunately not a great game. It's a victim of its own hype. So many people, including myself, held this game to such high standards expecting it to be the next Dead Space. In this sense, it fell short of the mark. The game is a little bit too linear. The controls aren't great. But there's a lot of positives to take from this. If we got a sequel, I almost guarantee that it would be fantastic. The game is a little on the short side, which worked out perfect for me being a father of two with a full-time job. The challenge was there, and though the story was quite predictable, I really enjoyed it. I actually found it quite comfortable. It's like going back and watching Friday the 13th Part 2. It's just enjoyable popcorn horror. And though I feel like most people have been overly negative on it, the review scores are about right and I would give it exactly the same. This is a solid 7 out of 10 experience, you'll enjoy it if you enjoy horror, but it can be frustrating. Wow, that ended up being a lot longer than I was expecting, and if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Yet again, like and subscribe, leave me a comment, I love that kind of stuff, and I'll see you again for another dad quest.